Hi, everyone. My name's Carrie. I'm just going to start today by saying life is unexpected, and I'm sure that's something we can all agree on. Um, my story starts in 1996. I met a guy named Ted. He was a southern gentleman, born and raised in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, loved his Cracker Barrel, loved bluegrass music, and was just a super, super humble guy who had an amazing ability to make friends wherever he went. And I'm sure those in the room that knew Ted would agree with that. Um, we were married a year later. I was really young. I was just a baby. I was 20 years old, but old enough to know a good thing when I saw it. But something very unexpected happened in our lives and brought us to our knees. 16 years after Ted and I said I do, we found ourselves on the eighth floor of the University of Washington Medical Center. Ted was in a hospital bed. I was at his side. We were looking back at the previous 16 years, going through our memories, laughing and crying, praying together, saying I love you, and so long for now as he passed away from cancer. Before Ted died, I, um, I had a tendency to pray to God, give him my worries, give him my fears, give him my anxieties, and then slowly take them back one by one. It was an issue I struggled with for a long time, um, and really it just it boiled down to control. But it was different in those days leading up to Ted's death. The days were really blurry, but I remember literally being on my knees in my bedroom praying out loud to God. I was overwhelmed. My heart was broken. I was scared out of my mind. I never thought I would do life without Ted. I never thought I was going to be a single mom to three little boys. I physically remember praying to him and giving him everything. I surrendered it all at the cross. It was too much, and I needed him more than ever at that moment. It was in that moment that I realized God comes to us personally in our grief. He meets us right where we're at. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and seeks those who are crushed in spirit. He loves us so, so much. He meets us right where we're at. I remember walking out of the hospital that morning. I was carrying Ted's canvas duffel bag that had his clothes in it that he wore to the hospital. And I was walking through the lobby down towards the parking garage, and I remember this extreme sense of peace coming over my body. It was, it's hard to explain. It's like somebody wrapped me in a warm blanket right out of the dryer. It was just an extreme sense of peace. I knew in that moment everything was going to be okay, and I was no longer fearful. I also heard a voice. It was clear, as clear as could be, and it was no doubt the Holy Spirit telling me over and over again, Carrie, you are loved. Just stand on my rock. You are loved. Just stand on my rock. Later that day, as I had to pick up the phone to call family and friends, I stood on that rock. As I had to gather my three boys, who were five, three, and two at the time, and tell them daddy wasn't coming home, I was glued to that rock. In the weeks and months and years since that day, I have not left that rock. I don't want this to be a story of loss today. I really don't. I want this to be a story of love and of hope. I was listening um, to Christine Kane just actually a couple days ago. I'm not sure if you're familiar with her. If you're not, look her up on social media. She's awesome. She said something that struck me in the heart. She said, plot twists in life are invitations to trust God. And I just think that's so, so good. I know in my brokenness, my faith and my trust overcame my fear. And at that moment, I knew just how much God loved me. 
I know we all have scars in our heart. I know I certainly do. I'm sure the majority of you do too because really grief spares no one. But what I want you to know today is you're not alone. Accept Jesus' invitation to trust him in the midst of your pain. God is a redeemer, God is a healer, and God is the author of hope. You just have to stand on his rock.